fine guys so now we shall revise chapter 1 which talks about the concept of indirect taxes and gst in india first what is tax tax is a compulsory payment which every citizen or every person of the country has to pay to the government and why do government collect the taxes is for the purpose of public development or public welfare like public expenditure to meet public expenditure like health education infrastructure public security or defense there are two types of taxes in india direct and indirect direct tax is the one where the impact and incidence is on the same person incidence means the liability to pay tax impact means the ultimate suffering of tax means from whose pocket the tax is ultimately going to the government income tax is one of the example of direct tax then coming to indirect tax the impact and incidence is on two different person so like gst or customs so the person who will be liable to pay tax normally will be the supplier but he can levy and collect it from the recipient so direct tax is levied on the assessee that is the person who has earned the income whereas indirect tax will be levied on the supplier but he has a right to collect it from the recipient then nature direct tax is progressive in nature that is higher the income you will end up paying higher tax sir what if i don't have any income you will not pay any tax that is income tax i am talking about whereas indirect tax is always regressive in nature so irrespective of your income if you are buying any goods on which gst is applicable you have to pay for it and get it if not you will not be able to get those goods goods and service tax was introduced in india from 1st july 2017 gst is a consumption based tax which is levied on the basis of destination principle means the state whenever there is a sale of goods outside the state the revenue will always go off of the revenue will always go to the destination state the concept relates to taxing the supply of goods or services at the point of consumption the gst law whatever totally five law have been passed all laws are applicable in entire india including jammu and kashmir it adopts dual taxation model where both central government and state government has the power to levy tax that too simultaneously next it ensures seamless flow of input tax credit to a large extent means the tax paid on the inward supply can be adjusted against the tax payable on outward supply subject to certain conditions and restrictions then a high powered federal body called gst council was established by the president it will take any decisions with respect to gst normally the gst council meetings will be conducted their decisions will be taken and the recommendations will be sent to the government and government will officially notify it the essence of gst or the importance of gst is to remove the cascading effect that is tax on tax previous to gst there were multiple taxes which were levied on the same goods but at different point on different persons but if that particular person cannot claim the credit then it is to be a part of the cost of that goods and automatically the cost of the goods used to go up and ultimately it used to be suffered by the consumer but the importance of gst is to to the possible extent to remove that cascading effect then to levy gst the power was not there in the constitution first an amendment was brought in the constitution to take the powers to levy gst or to implement gst only then the gst law was implemented so the three main articles which were introduced in the constitution for the purpose of gst are article 246a which gave the power to the government to levy or to make laws with respect to gst so overrides article 246a overrides 246 because 246 doesn't include gst so in 246a they took the power to make laws with respect to gst yes only parliament that is central government can levy tax in case of interstate supply as well then coming to article 269a which talks about interstate supply on interstate supply igst would be levied by central government and it will be shared between the central government and the destination state equally and in case of interstate supply the place of supply and time of supply has to be decided by the central government then coming to article 279a which talks about gst council gst council is a federal body constituted by the president of india on 15 september 2016 union finance minister is the chairperson and union finance minister in charge of the state and all the state finance ministers are the members of this council one of them will choose a vice chairperson so totally there will be 33 members and in each gst council the quorum for the meeting will be half of the members that is total members so the quorum would be 17 members guys 
then voting power is for the central government the power two members will be there from central government they have one third whereas all state members put together they have a voting weighted voting uh, cost or weightage of two third then coming to decision of gst council any decision in gst council should be taken with three fourth of majority three fourth of the weighted votes which are present and voted the members who are present and voting then coming to the current status of gst law totally there are five laws so whatever i violated in red color is the laws passed by central government whatever i have violated in green color is passed by the state governments chalo first cgst act it is passed to levy and collect cgst on intra state supply intra state supply means the supply within the state then igst act passed to levy collect igst on inter state supply inter state supply means supply outside the state or outside the union territory next union territory act or utgst act so to levy and collect utgst on intra union territory supplies that is the supply within the same union territory next that is gst compensation to states tax act 2017 it is not levied on all the goods it is levied only on some luxury and sin goods in addition to gst so to void to compensate states for the loss of revenue if any due to introduction or due to the implementation of gst then the states goods and service tax act that is sgst act passed by each and every states to levy collect sgst on intra state supply chalo so in simple on intra state supply cgst plus sgst would be levied equally then in case of supply within the union territory we levy cgst plus utgst equally then in case of inter state supply igst would be levied totally by the central government they will collect it half they will keep another half they will give it to the destination state then coming to the list of taxes which were levied before the introduction of gst but now subsumed under gst so whatever i have violated here in red color where the taxes which were levied by central government but now subsumed under gst and whatever i have violated in green color where the taxes which were levied by the state government previously but from 1st july 2017 it has been subsumed under gst so the important of this is like central excise duty which was levied on manufacture by the central government then cvd that is the taxes which were levied on import of goods in addition to import duty then service tax which were levied by central government on services provided within state outside state outside the country so next coming to state taxes state vat that is the tax which were levied when the goods are sold within the state next central sales tax that were the tax which were levied when the goods are sold outside the state it was levied by central government but it was a revenue of state government next coming to entertainment tax levied by state government is subsumed under gst but if it is levied by the local government it still continues it still continues guys so and other things you can just go through so these are the taxes which have been subsumed under gst next article 366 12a of the constitution defines gst as tax on supply of goods and service tax services or both so the taxable event under gst is supply and on supply of both goods as well as services gst is levied what is goods what is services what is supply all three they have defined which we would be learning it in chapter 2 except alcoholic liquor for human consumption means alcoholic liquor for human consumption is completely kept outside the gst then as per article 279a 5 of the constitution five petroleum products that are petroleum crude motor spirit petrol high speed diesel natural gas aviation turbine fuel have been temporarily been kept outside the gst and gst council shall decide the date from which they shall be included in gst so at the time of introduction of gst this five petroleum products were kept temporarily outside the gst but any day that can be brought under gst by gst council by the decision taken by gst council but as on today also it is outside the gst the following matters have been kept outside the gst that is alcoholic liquor for human consumption entertainment tax which are levied by local bodies then motor vehicle tax property tax such as stamp duty electricity duty is levied by state government petroleum crude diesel petrol aviation turbine fuel and natural gas whereas on tobacco and tobacco products on manufacturing excise duty is still levied and on the sale gst is levied 
So on tobacco and tobacco products is one of the special products on which both are levied, excise as well as GST. Yes, this is all about the revision of chapter one guys. Thank you.